Okay, keep it coming. Scientist in charge of, uh, I was the scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. <coughs> I'm not sure what day it is, uh, and, I'm, and I'm not precisely sure if the eruption is over. I'm trapped here in it, uh, some kind of military installation in some godforsaken part of Colorado. <coughs> we've got no food, and we've got no power, and, uh, the ashfall has uh, contaminated the water supply. <coughs> the air is so thick with it that we can barely breathe. These, these men that I'm with, these think if we stay put that we're going to be rescued. But uh, I honest to God believe that we just watch and wait. We're as good as dead. happened, many visitors to Yellowstone were blissfully unaware that it was volcanic. After all, where was the cone-shaped volcano, like Mount St. Helens or Vesuvius? They didn't realize that they were actually standing on top of it, that beneath their feet was one of the largest volcanoes in the world. The truth is, we were only just beginning to understand the workings of the park ourselves. And Virgil, the Virtual Geophysical Imaging Laboratory, well, that was going to help us. Or at least, uh, that's what our boss, Michael Eldridge, tried to persuade the press. With it, we can input data from seismometers, GPS instruments, and video cameras strategically positioned around the park to produce a living, breathing 3D model of what's happening here at Yellowstone. Virgil can also help us to understand the park's beating heart. The vast reservoir of red-hot molten rock that lies just a few kilometers beneath where you're sitting now. The sleeping dragon that powers all of the geysers and hot springs, mud spots and steam vents that draw people here in their millions every year. See those colors around the edges? Yeah. They're creatures. Creatures? <laughs> tiny, tiny creatures called thermophiles. You can only see them with a microscope, and they can only live in very, very hot water. In fact, some scientists believe that all life on Earth began in places just like this three and a half billion years ago. Billion? <laughs> Maggie Chin, KCVZ News, Salt Lake City. Hello. Hello. Your model is very impressive, sir. Ah, uh, thank you, Miss Chin. My question is, will it help? Help what, Miss Chin? Well, in the last decade, we've seen more and more ground uplift at Yellowstone. Twelve feet, I believe, is the conservative estimate. Well, that estimate is not conservative. Nonetheless, many of your colleagues in the scientific community believe that it's one of many signs that an eruption is coming. I'm going to let Rick Lieberman, scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, deal with that one. Rick? Thank you. Uh, this is a sequence of Yellowstone's geological behavior over the past 100 years. 
Okay, there we go. You see, what, what we have beneath our feet here at Yellowstone is a, is a type of volcano, a type of hidden volcano, uh, referred to as a, as a restless caldera. Uh, caldera, because you'll note it resembles the shape of a uh, cauldron, and uh, restless because it spends much of its life doing what, what you see it's doing right here. It's huffing and puffing as the magma and the hydrothermal systems beneath the ground rise and fall uh, for reasons that we actually don't fully yet understand. Uh, this uh, uplift that you've mentioned, Maggie, is very simply just a part of everyday life uh, here at Yellowstone. So we're definitely not looking at an imminent super eruption. Let me, let me say this, the chances of a uh, so-called uh, super eruption are on the order of you know, something like one in 600,000. In fact, it's, it's more than twice as likely that an airplane will crash into your backyard. So. Haven't we just seen extra ground uplift at Norris? Yes, yeah, we, ha we have as a matter of fact, but uh, that may well be uh, hydrothermal, you know, a build up of, uh, a build up of water. I'll tell you what, Miss Chin, you give me 10 bucks right now, and I will offer you odds of 600,000 to one. So uh, if this thing does go up, you'd you, you make a killing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that doesn't mean you see a no, I'm not saying you do. Hey! How are you? Hey, hey. Oh, faithful. Hey, William. Hey. Look, as Eldridge said, it is a tool. Ah, oh, come on, it's unreliable. We're not relying on it. Hey, what was that? that what was that? That, that was a press conference. That was a joke. We were unveiling Virgil. Well, what, what did you want me to say? You know, hello everyone, this is Virgil, and it frankly has no more of an idea of what's going on down there than we do, but thank you for coming. <laughs> Buckle up. Matt, you check out the busted seismometers. I'll get there tomorrow. Good. Here, here's a point. We could have replaced all of those seismometers for the money spent on Virgil. That's the point. Yeah, this big V will have its uses. I'll see you soon. Good to see you, man. See you, pal. Listen, I, I need the uh, coordinates of the Taiwan quake. Yeah. Kaohsiung region. Yeah. Hey. Five seven. Yep. Three three. Okay. This thing takes up far too much space, you know. Thanks, Matt. Guess what this is? You tell me. Pumice. It comes from deep inside a volcano. It's so hot, the rocks all melted. But when the volcano blows up, it gets blown high into the sky. And guess what? It Floats. Oh, it does. My coffee. <laughs> How long is that? How long can that float? Yeah, okay, Paul. That's enough. Hey, I found out about flights. They said it's fine at seven months. Oh, come on, Fee. <laughs> Honey, we just flew to Yellowstone back. Yeah, I know, but that way you were with me, and B, you weren't in the air for like 11 hours. Then I don't get to see my mum this side of Christmas, do I? See you guys soon. This is Matt. What's the damage? Ah, uh, well, some broken glass for sure. Nothing major. Okay, what do we got? Be in touch. 6.9. 10 kilometers beneath the South Arm Fork. Okay, I'm running a simulation. 6.9 at what? 10 kilometers beneath the South Arm Fork. That's confirmed. 6.9. Standing by for more data. Give me the webcam images of the fishing bridge area. Over, say, say the last five minutes. Whoa, 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 go, 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 go back. Tell 
Maddie needs to get to the other end of the lake. Where are you gonna be? I'm gonna be in my office. Fortunately, due to the remoteness of the area, damage was limited. But tragically, nine bodies have been recovered so far. Three of them children. All from the fishing bridge area of the park. As well, 43 people have been taken to hospital with various injuries, some of them life-threatening. I'm going to hand you over now to Mr. Rick Lieberman of the USGS, then we'll take some questions. Rick? The earthquake, a 6.9 on the Richter scale, occurred at 12.13 local time, centered at a depth of 10 kilometers beneath Mount Sheridan, at the southern end of Lake Yellowstone. The earthquake triggered a landslide off the South Arm Fork, which in turn caused a tsunami wave to hit the northern shore here a few minutes later. All indicators suggest that this quake was not volcanic, but was, was tectonic in its nature caused by a grinding together of the Earth's plates along a known fault line. The pattern of aftershocks of decreasing magnitude is consistent with this type of seismic activity. Any questions? Is it true Old Faithful is stopped? Uh, yes, that, that is true. However, uh, ground movement can both block and unblock hydrothermal features. Has there been any effect on the uplift at Norris? No, 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 not that we've seen at all, no. Are you still sure that there isn't going to be an eruption, Mr. Lieberman? As, I, as I've said, Ms. Chin, this earthquake was not caused by volcanic activity, as far as we know. We are increasing our alert status to yellow, which, uh, as you know, does mean watch. Yep. Does that mean you're not ruling out an eruption? Uh, look, Ms. Chin, Yellowstone has sometimes as many as 3,000 earthquakes every year. None of them followed by eruptions. Now, everything points to this being a one-off tragic accident. The truth? We, uh, we had the Hebgen Lake earthquake in 1959, a couple of miles from Yellowstone. 7.5 in the Richter scale. Massive landslide, 29 dead. And it didn't indicate a damn thing. Again in 1975. Mag 6, it didn't either. I mean, hell, I'm a politician, not a scientist. The USGS guys tell me it's another Hebgen Lake. I gotta take their word for it. You know, you go on the available facts. Problem was that uh, the place the size of Yellowstone, we, um, well, we didn't have all the available facts. So South Dakota should go. Geophysicist Dr. Kenneth Wiley. His new book, Super Bangs, deals directly with phenomena similar to those we've seen in recent days at Yellowstone. The book carries with it some dire warnings about the consequences of ignoring the... Richard Lieberman, YVO. Hey, it's me. You, uh... You better take a look at KCVZ News. I will do that. Thank you. I'll call you back. I think we have good reason to be concerned. Maggie, I think that we ought to make a clear distinction between a regular volcanic eruption and a <clears throat> eruption. Mount St. Helens was the most violent eruption in American history. It killed 57 people, and it erupted about one cubic kilometer of volcanic ash. You're watching the great That's man. Huh? Yeah. Oh. Now, let's say that uh, this cube here <laughs> represents the amount of oh, wow. volcanic material what ejected by okay. Mount St. Helens. Now, in volcanic terms, it's a tiddler. Krakatoa. A tiddler. The Indonesian volcano that erupted in 1883 mm -hmm. was 17 times larger than Mount St. Helens, killed 36,000 people, and it's represented by this cube here. Yeah. And finally, we have this. This is two and a half thousand times the size of Mount St. Helens. This is a supervolcano. This is currently sitting underneath the ground at Yellowstone Park. And when was the last time one of these super eruptions happened? About 74,000 years ago, in a place called Toba, on the other side of the world, Sumatra, 
Now, the volcanic eruption there was so vast, it created a volcanic winter, plunged the world into darkness, and all but wiped out the human race. Missed one, though, didn't it? And Yellowstone has produced eruptions on this sort of scale before? Oh, yes. Three times in the last two million years. And you think that the activity that we're seeing there right now may indicate that it's about to happen for a fourth time? Oh, God. Yes, I do believe that these events are cyclical. Three caldera forming eruptions in the last 2.1 million years means, on average, one eruption every 600,000 years. And we haven't had an eruption like that at Yellowstone for 640,000 years now. In other words, we're overdue. No. Yes, I believe that you're <laughs> oh, overdue. Oh, yeah. jeez. I believe that the warning signs are there. If you care to read them. Thank you, Dr. Wiley. You are Thank well, you, Dr. Dr. Wiley. God. I know he's your brother in law, Rick, but uh, the guy's a total numpty. That's not a good thing, right? No, that's not good, no. We were trying to monitor something so vast that it was almost incomprehensible. The park itself is over two million acres, and somewhere within that was the volcano. But for the longest time, we, we couldn't figure out where. Then in the 80s, NASA took some aerial photographs of the park, and uh, these photographs revealed the volcanic crater for the first time. It turns out we'd been looking on the wrong scale. This crater measured 85 kilometers by 45, big enough to hold the largest city in the world, Tokyo, population 18 million. Yes, I did see Mr. Wiley on the television. No, 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 no. Approximately every 600,000 years, sir. I mean, with a conservative margin of error, we could be up by a hundred. And I'm telling you, sir, we're not hiding anything, all right? Everything we know is out on our website. How's it looking, man? That's looking good, baby. No, no, sir. Uh, no, sir. I I'm afraid that drilling down to try to siphon off the magma wouldn't work. No, in fact, it could probably cause the whole thing to go off. It's all true. This thing's ready to blow in a matter of well, days, if not hours, and. Uh, Everybody, absolutely everybody is going to die horribly. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Your Holiness. <laughs> nice. Is there not a magma chamber oh, underneath God. Yellowstone National Park? Yes, Ken. yes. And is this magma chamber of sufficient size that if there was an eruption there, it could potentially be rated yes. as a super eruption? Exactly. Well, I'm not could. saying that there will. I'm saying no. that there's a chance. No, what you said on television was overdue. Do you know what that? That's what you said. Overdue, you said. Caught up in the moment, I expect. Well, well, you and a few million other people, I guess. Hey, let's not do that. No, many. sis, I have a legitimate scientific viewpoint. Oh, he oh, thinks he's here. Have you ever actually been to Yellowstone? It's not necessary. No. Your oh, excellent God. website provides all the data. I just interpret. Oh, you, no, you misinterpret. That, that's what you do. Can we not do this now, uh, please? Uh, look, all, all I'm saying is you do not go on television and create a mass panic over one potential scenario just in order to sell a book. Oh, come on. You don't go on television and tell everybody that everything's going to be just fine when you know damn well it might not be. Kenneth. No, but just... No. Not. Both of you. I said not now. I'm sick of this. Do you have nothing else? You haven't seen your nephew in over a year. Oh. Sorry. Hello, Will. How's school? <laughs> Seamless. When I first met Rick, he was a geology student, part of a team studying Yellowstone Lake. 
They, uh, they discovered this enormous 2,000 foot long bulge beneath the lake. And got very excited about it. And the press got hold of the story and convinced a lot of people that Yellowstone was going to blow. It created this huge panic. And then nothing happened. It made Rick very cautious about what he said in public. And when he got the job as scientist in charge, he well, people didn't pay even more attention to what he said. So, it's a boy, right? Mmm, little boy dragon. Huh. And with a new feature. Show me. Some sort of anomaly above the magma chamber just below Firehole Creek Basin. Yeah. Could be water or gas. An intrusion of magma through a fault line opened up by the quake, right? Yeah, impossible to tell until we get a clear image. Oh, thanks. We're still processing all the data from the K.O. Sunquake. Oh, God, that was days ago. Yeah, I know. Listen, Matt's found a section of dead pine to the northeast of Sour Creek. You got a visitor. <laughs> Hang on. Northeast of Sour Creek Dome, along a ring fracture of the caldera rim. CO2 or heat? CO2, suffocating the roots. The magma's only two to three kilometers deep at that point. Yeah, or less if it's rising. All right, so who is it? Wendy something from FEMA. Wendy Rice? The undersecretary in charge of the Federal Emergency Management Agency is here. You told her to wait in my office. You're fired, Dave. You can't fire me. Yeah, you're lucky that's true. I'm sorry. Ms. Rice. <laughs> You've caught me off guard. Sorry. I'm Richard Lieberman. Yes, Rick, I recognize you from the television. Oh. Just call me Wendy. Thanks. Well, sorry about the mess, Wendy. No problem. It's been a busy couple of days. Please sit down. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to cut to the chase, Rick. I want to know if we should be worried about this. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, based on the data that, w that we're, we're getting, uh, yes, there are indicators that there could be an eruption. Or. It could be business as usual at Yellowstone. Now, if there is an eruption, then there is a good possibility that uh, it's going to be a moderate one. This isn't enough, Rick. If there's even the slightest chance of this happening, I want to know what that means. I want to know what we can do about it. How much do you know about uh, super eruptions? But super in front of eruption, I don't imagine it means better. Can I show you something? Please. Okay. See, the magma chamber that sits underneath Yellowstone, well, here. We think it's roughly the same dimensions as the, the caldera rim itself. We think it's around 40 kilometers wide by 80 kilometers long and around 8 kilometers deep. You think? <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a very difficult thing to get a clear picture of. In fact, the only way to even attempt to see a magma chamber is, uh, ironically enough, by relying on earthquakes. Have a seat, please. Thank you. It's called uh, seismic tomography. What we do is we plant an array of seismographs throughout the park, yep. and then when an earthquake occurs, the seismic shock waves from these events travel through the earth. Now, these waves move slightly slower through the molten rock than through the solid rock. So we can use these slight differences in arrival time here at the seismometers to begin to calculate and plot the rough dimensions of the chamber. It's kind of like sonar. And that tells you how much magma is down there? Well, what, what we're trying to determine, essentially, is the nature of this magma. Is it, is it eruptible magma? Is it uh, too viscous? Is it too sticky to go anywhere? Or is it molten enough? Is it liquid enough that it, that it can escape? You know, we also want to know how it's situated in the chamber. Is it uh, kind of spread out in individual pods or uh, pockets throughout the chamber? Or, and this is, this is what we don't want, is it accumulated in one place, sufficient enough that it could trigger a, uh, a super eruption? OK, let's talk worst case scenario. OK, well, uh, we have run some projections based on the first super eruption at Yellowstone uh, 2.1 million years ago, mm -hmm. essentially because this is the one we have the most uh, data available on. Mm -hmm. Now, if the next one were to behave in a similar way, then we would be looking at between 
two and three thousand cubic kilometers of rock, gas, and ash erupting across the United States in a pattern that looks like this. Zone one represents a hundred kilometer radius around Yellowstone. Basically everything in this area would be completely wiped out by uh, pyroclastic flows. That's the rock and ash that spills from the side of an eruptive column. Um, that is a pyroclastic flow. These surges can travel up to 700 kilometers an hour. So, uh, yeah, these, these journalists were very, very lucky. Yeah, yeah this woman was uh, caught at the edge of a pyroclastic flow. You see, these surges can reach up to 800 degrees Celsius. Anyway, yeah, that's, that, that's what happens to anyone that's within the first 100 kilometer uh, radius of the volcano. Mm -hmm. Now, out here in zones two and three, Virtually everyone and everything in these two areas will be trapped by extremely heavy ash fall. That's roughly three million people. Yeah. yeah. And uh, here out in zone four, we're talking about ash fall of around 15 centimeters. Now, 15 centimeters, that doesn't sound like a lot, but you add rain to 15 centimeters of volcanic ash, and that uh, is certainly enough to collapse a roof. Um, and then, you know, in zone five, it gets down to around five centimeters of ash fall. Uh, this is a huge area covering yeah. most of the grasslands, any animals that happen to be grazing there. And uh, that's also the grain belt, of course, so that's all the, the food gone. Uh, and then uh, zone six, we tail down to around a centimeter of ash uh, extending out to the eastern seaboard. A centimeter. I read it takes just one millimeter to close an airport. Yeah. See, the thing that people don't understand about volcanic ash is it's not like ash from your backyard barbecue. It's rock. It's abrasive. It's pervasive. It's destructive. It uh, shorts out electrical equipment. It clogs machinery. You name it. And it's also extremely tiny. It's uh, 100 microns across. It's so tiny you can inhale it. And when you do, it uh, combines with the moisture in your lungs and uh, forms a cement-like mixture. You essentially drown in what's basically liquid concrete. So Anyway, uh, that is the, the worst case scenario. So you tell me. I mean, if an event like this were to happen, what is FEMA going to do? Is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> it is going to happen. Is it going to happen in our lifetime? Um, I don't know. And that is the most honest answer that anybody can give you, Wendy. I don't know. I simply don't accept that we were complacent. The big problem is that volcanoes are notoriously difficult to predict. Well, look at Mount St. Helens. In 1980, it erupted horizontally rather than vertically, took us completely by surprise, killed 57 people, including one of our own guys. Even with the best equipment in the world, and we had the very best, by the way, even then, you still got two big blind spots, timing and scale. You can't tell when, and you can't tell how big. Well, contract the 
the stations. We establish an exact location. Denying the possibility of a super eruption. Norris, as I've said to you before, Miss Chin. Norris was a hydrothermal event and by no means a surefire indicator of volcanic activity. And certainly not on the scale that you are referring to. Nevertheless, we have issued a code red warning because we don't take these things lightly. Yes. But you... Daddy. Yeah. He's getting famous. But you can't rule out a super eruption, can you? It looks hot. Likely as an asteroid strike, according to some experts. And half as unlikely as being struck by lightning, Miss Chin. And how many of us lose sleep over that? That's all the time we have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Too much politics, not enough science. Okay, are we ready to run this simulation? Let's yep. do it. All right. So what I'd like to do is run through a couple of potential scenarios here. Hey, Rick, we've got another quake just over a mile south of Norris. Okay, how big? 1.9. 1.9, okay. Now, this anomaly that we've discovered near Norris, now this could be water and gas as we know, or worst case scenario, it could be a new pod of uh, eruptable magma. So I want to concentrate our simulations around this area and see what uh, the potential damage could be, okay? Mm -hmm. So option number one, let's say that uh, we've got one cubic kilometer of eruptable magma. Okay, and uh, drop it. Run it. No eruption. Based on option one, seems not. All right, then let's keep all the other parameters the same, uh, but increase it by five, so we'll make it five cubic kilometers. Okay, how big is this? Moderate BEI two. BEI two in duration. Over approximately three days. But that amount of magma could have been a lot bigger. Okay, let's increase it by another factor of five and uh, make it 25 cubic kilometers. Okay. Whenever you're ready. BEI five, Mountain Helen size. Right. So 10 times more magma, a thousand times more eruption. Potentially. Okay, so let's increase it by another factor of five and make it 125 cubic kilometers. This time, let's just, let's just run it this time just from the hydrothermal blast. Sure. The EI-5 again. Okay. The EI-5 again. What happened? Computer glitch. Okay, tell me what we just saw. All right. All right, I'll say it. If we have a reservoir of meltdown there that's larger than 125 cubic kilometers, then this model is telling us that even a moderate eruption near Norris could destabilize the rest of the chamber and trigger a... Uh... VEI-8. Super eruption. <laughs> That's great, great. And if frogs had wings, then they wouldn't bump their little green asses hopping around, eh? <laughs> if, if there was a pocket of melt over 125 cubic kilometers, then a possible eruption at Norris may trigger further eruptions, which maybe, just possibly, could register as VEI-8. Brilliant, great. Jesus, you're letting yourself be spooked by a, by, by a video game. Whoa. Just because there's a lot of magma down there doesn't mean that it's all going to come out. Big magma chambers can produce big eruptions, but they can also produce small ones. The real question is, what is the trigger 
that can set an eruption off. An earthquake, perhaps, opening up the roof of the chamber and allowing the magma to escape. But you see, many of the earthquakes at Yellowstone over the previous 600,000 years could have done that. And so far, not one had. To find out what was really going on at Yellowstone, we needed better images of the chamber. We also needed to see what was going on at ground level. We needed to be there. How close are we here from Norris? Uh, 25 kilometers as per handbook rules. Exciting, huh? Oh, yeah. Very exciting. With any luck, it'll erupt while we have such a good view. Nancy, you better get up here right away. Okay. So where's this uplift concentrated? Here. Firehole River Basin. Some males from Norris. Okay. Hang on. The question is, is this rising magma or is this groundwater? I could make a plausible case for either. Yeah, I know you could. Another 2.2 to the northeast of Norris. That's the third today. So, we got another swarm coming. I need the SRI data for the entire park. Could we get more instrumentation down at Firehole River Basin? Uh, if we steal them from elsewhere. Well, steal them. The ground uplift, earthquake swarms, rising levels of carbon dioxide, and the, the hydrothermal event. All of these things can be indicators of volcanic activity. Equally, they can mean nothing. We close the park to be safe. But that didn't stop the hordes of people coming to check it out for themselves. Hey, Rick. Rick. Hey. Hang on. hey. <sighs> Miss Chin. Can we come in? <sighs> Look, I've got to cover this one way or another. It's my job. Okay. Do you want to cover this? All right, then you need to understand what it is that you're covering. Yeah, it's me. Get me Matt. Okay, come on in, Maggie. Let's go, I'm, guys. I'm sorry, guys. It's not the crew, okay? Come on through. Just not the crew. It's me. Uh, we're gonna give uh, Maggie Chin the tour. western rim of the giant caldera. It's where the ground fell over a thousand feet after the last super eruption. So we're in the volcano. Sure are. And I thought we'd take a little drive to the other side. So what can you see? Yellowstone Lake. Okay. Now look out across the lake to that range of mountains on the far side. The Absorcus. That's right. How far would you say those mountains are from here? How far? Uh, 10 miles? Uh, roughly 15. Now those mountains are where you'll find the eastern edge of the giant caldera. The western edge is about another 15 miles behind us. North to south, it's even further. It's over 50 miles. So that's about 45 minutes of driving, and we're still only in the center of the volcano crater. What's your point, Matt? 
My point is, if this thing erupts, you'll die. If you think you're going to win some award or get promoted because you knew about this first, you won't. There won't be anyone around to give you your pat on the back. Ma'am, you need to get some perspective. force, causing destruction on a previously unknown scale, not just in the immediate vicinity. Just a few inches can increase the weight beyond breaking point, and that doubles it. I wouldn't call it complacency exactly. I, mean, I do think USGS is being rather slow to react to certain threats that I think are uh, uh, serious. Every 600,000 years. You think that it's going to happen on our watch? I don't know. It's just a feeling. You feel it. You know what? It's not. It's not like. A, it's not a feeling. It's. More, you know what it is? It's a fear. Fear of what? It's a fear of, of not knowing enough. To be able to predict something like this, it's the fear of knowing too much, and not being able to do anything about that. You know, this is. It's not something that we can afford to take a gamble on. You know. We look at numbers and, and graphs and simulations for answers. Well, 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 what happens when we don't get them? Rick, it's different out here. There's a feeling that something's about to happen. But what do I know? <laughs> So Fiona said she wants to go to England Talk and to my wife again. You won't let her? She's seven months pregnant. You know, that's a long flight. Yeah. Put her on the plane, Rick. To a geologist like me, there is only one surefire sign of an impending eruption, and that's harmonic tremor. That's a seismographic reading which indicates that magma is on the move. Even then, though, even when you see one of those, you can't tell how big an eruption you're looking at. But you know that it's coming. Well, on the 26th of June, for the first time, we saw just that. We saw harmonic tremor. And where is it? Norris. Rick, you want to suggest a change of alert? Yeah, you know, another red. That's it's going to create more panic. This is as sure as we get. I know. This, this is eminent. Man. I know. You want me to plug the data into Virgil? And uh, that. Hang what? on, hang on. No, really. Please, please. And that please. What? Uh, let, let's do that and just see if it. Jesus. Gets... Look, wait. There's going to be an eruption. Okay, we know that. I don't need you to tell me what harmonic tremor means. So now you, 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 need, you need advice on upgrade to the alert status, Look. and you need to let people know. OK, so I, I, if I upgrade to a red, everyone's going to think that we've got a super eruption on our hands. I am not going to be held responsible for some kind of mass panic. But wait a minute, it is our responsibility. Yeah. It's our, no, shut up, Dave. It's our job, it's our duty to let people know, to tell them what we know, so get your ass off the fence. Well, and, and you tell me while going on TV and telling Joe Sixpack that the end of the world is nigh, you tell me how that's going to help this situation. What do you think of Purpose is here. Okay, listen, I will brief them up and I will brief the state, but just before they evacuate the whole of America, they're gonna wanna know how big the thing's gonna be. Well, at least the ship's got a bloody captain there.
is going on? <laughs> Nothing is going on. What oh, do you come mean? Come on. Say? What, no mention of it for weeks, and all of a sudden we're going to England. It's not like that. I'm not supposed to be suspicious. Look, you, you said that you wanted to go and see your mom. Oh, Jesus, right? Rick, just be honest with me. I'm being honest. Are with you? you? Yes. It's going to be a big eruption. You've got to come with us. Look, it's going to be exactly what I what I said that it's going to be. You know, this little girl may never meet her father because of the decision you're making right now. Come on, we, we all believe that this is going to be a moderate eruption. And yeah, things are going to go, well, you know, a little crazy in this country for, for a while because everyone's nervous right now. God, that's why I, I'd just be happier if you both were, were in London when, when all that's going on. And then when things calm down, and then I'll, I'll come and I'll, I'll see you. Can I go on the plane now? Yes, you're going to go on the plane now. You take care of your mom, okay? Okay. You call me when you get there. I will. Be good Love on the you. plane. See ya. you to our San Francisco FEMA office and I want you to talk to Lisa Cochran. She'll be the one to uh, direct any activity at that point. Okay. Uh, uh, one moment. Bring the center screen volume up. A leaked email seen by KZVZ confirms that the U.S. Geological Survey expects an eruption anytime soon, possibly within hours and possibly with devastating consequences for America and the world. Oh, God. I'm Maggie Chin with KZBZ News, reporting to you live from Yellowstone National Park. A radius of 100 miles around the park is being evacuated amid scenes of chaos and confusion. Highway 20, the main route linking West Yellowstone to Idaho Falls, is at a complete standstill. Meanwhile, towns and cities hundreds of miles from Yellowstone are under siege as panic buyers stock up on provisions like canned foods and water. Many stores have been forced to close early, prompting fears that violence will soon erupt. We have to shoot him, we will. We'll defend our property and our life. You do realize it's the worst possible way to come out, guaranteed to maximize panic. The story's been picked up by all major networks, not just in this country. All I know, Andy, is it didn't come from my end. Nor from Governor Marshall's office, nor from anyone here in Washington. Still, we have to deal with it. Sir, this is Rick Lieberman. Hey. Rick, Joe Foster, Secretary for Homeland Security. Michael, you know, of course. Hey. Governor Marshall should be joining us at any moment. I didn't expect to see you here. Hello, everybody. Really? Glad you could join us. Half my state's about to be vaporized. I thought I should attend. Eric, yeah, please have a seat. I'll get straight to the point. This leak hasn't just caused chaos here, but around the world. Well, it certainly didn't come from USGS. Nor FEMA. Yeah, all right, people. The buck is well passed. Wherever it came from, the media have got hold of it, and now we have got to address it. So, Rick. What I'm going to ask you is very simple. I need you to make a statement ruling out the possibility of a super eruption. Well, ruling it out. Nothing bigger than Mount St. Helens. People would accept that, and it's what the evidence suggests. I, well, I can't. I beg your pardon? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't, I can't say that. Why the hell not? Because our computer model now suggests that even a small eruption could destabilize the magma chamber and trigger a super eruption. Rick, I understand that, but you're talking remote possibility. No, I'm, I'm talking about... What I am talking about are hard facts. Fact one, there are food riots. People are fighting each other to leave the country. Fact two, the dollar is on its knees. Wall Street has crashed. Your country is going down the toilet, and you're telling me you're not prepared to make a statement to help stop that? Please, with, with all due respect, sir, I... Governor Marshall? Rick, every highway, every interstate in Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Nebraska, the Dakotas, Iowa, and Nevada is turning into a goddamn parking lot. 
Now everybody's trying to get the hell away from Yellowstone. Nothing's even happened yet. Yet. Now the point is, Rick, even if the worst does happen, I mean, clogging up the roads, screwing up the airlines, that's yes. not going to do and any of us Wendy, any I, good. I, I appreciate that, it, Wendy, I do. But uh, until I have something definitive, please don't make me make statements that Rick, are contrary to... you know as well as I do that harmonic tremor can stop as well as start. Mike. It's your responsibility. My responsibility is to tell the public and the landholders what is happening at Yellowstone. You know that. I used to know that. Actually, Rick, as a federal employee, your responsibility is what's best for the country. Now, you have evidence of an eruption, but, and I've heard you say this yourself again and again, chances of a super eruption are virtually zero. Uh, no, no, you are right, but I... Then I really don't see what the problem is here. Thank you all. I'll see you in 10 minutes. Well, tremor's strong and constant. I'm plugging the coordinates into the seismic image. Okay. Should give us a clearer idea where the magma is. Good. Good. You get everything you need, Dave? I think so. Great. Well, enough to get me going until you guys join me tomorrow. Oh, we'll be out here first thing. All right. Don't leave it too long. Don't worry. Okay. You out of here? I'm out of here. See you tomorrow. You take care, man. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know... Tricks on TV. America and the world has been watching with growing anxiety the developing situation at Yellowstone National Park. After a full briefing from the U.S. Geological Survey, and in particular the scientist in charge at Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, Rick Lieberman, I can assure you all that after weeks of intensive monitoring at Yellowstone, they have gathered no evidence to suggest a so-called super eruption is imminent. Instead, the USGS believes that a small to moderate eruption an event comparable in size to the eruption at Mount St. Helens in 1980 may be due. At this moment, we are taking the appropriate precautions in line with the scale of eruption. The evacuation of the Yellowstone vicinity is currently underway. For those in states bordering Wyoming, we ask you to follow standard state advice, remain indoors, seal all doors and windows, and stock up on sufficient food and water for three days. I ask my fellow Americans to stay calm and to use your usual good sense at this time. Thank you. Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Lieberman, up until now you've been extremely measured in your statements about Yellowstone. Do you agree with Secretary Foster in what he just said now? left-hand side, sir, towards the rear of the plane. Okay, thank you. Hi. You're sitting up here? Oh. Hello yeah. there. No, I'm back there. Important the visiting Washington the and USGS has you sitting in the back of the plane. I recommend Hi. a sweet publishing deal, a TV star like you. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I take it you had a gun to your head this afternoon? Uh, yeah. 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 You could say that. Fiona and William? Oh, they're on a plane to London. Oh, see ya. Okay, guys. The last number's in. Fingers crossed. Just what are we looking at here? Ah, uh, 1,500 cubic kilometers of melt. I'm 
fourteen hundred. That's just the top of the chamber. Is it eruptible magma? Is it uh, too viscous? Is it too sticky to go anywhere? And this is this is what we don't want. Is it accumulated in one place? telling us that even a moderate eruption near Norris could destabilize the rest of the chamber and trigger a... Uh... BEI-8. Super eruption. Jesus, you're letting yourself be spooked. I am video game. There's gonna be an eruption, okay? We know that. I don't need you to tell me what harmonic tremor means. Turn fast your seatbelt sign off yet. Sir, there are Field officer, I need to speak to you. Sir, I have to ask you to turn your phone off. Doc! I think he's over here! Don't touch my arm! This is a mud. It stopped. Dress. I'm sorry to haul your way. No problem. Who have I got from USGS? No one. What? You can't get through to the field office at the moment. Hey, Dave. Michael Eldridge is on his way over. Is this uh, vacuum imagery all we have on this? Yeah, and it's only a projection. What? Yeah. Okay, Air Force, I need a plane up there as close as it can get taking a look at this thing. Let's brief the White House and little we know so far. Dave, get back on the line. I want to talk to Governor Marshall in Wyoming, Joe Foster at Homeland, and keep trying the Yellowstone field office. And Bob, please get me something else to wear. Sure. Mary? Jesus. You got the job. You need to take a look, man. You need to see what's going on. Make contact with Dave. Let him know what's happening. There are two kinds of volcanic eruptions, red and gray. In a red eruption, the magma, it's actually called lava when it's erupted, flows freely from the ground. Um, you've seen it on TV, this slow-moving flow of molten material. It's damn destructive in its own way, but slow, very slow. You can literally outpace a lava flow without breaking a sweat. Not so with a gray eruption. What you have there, you've got magma trapped by overlaying rock, okay? The pressure builds and builds to the point the whole thing blows. The magma under pressure turns to foam and gas, which bursts upward in a vertical column at twice the speed of sound, 50 kilometers up into the stratosphere. There are no cell phones Field permitted off. on this aircraft. I understand. I need to Sir, I have to ask you to turn your phone off. My name is Richard Lieberman. I'm the scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. I'm receiving news of an emergency here that could affect the flight path and safety of this aircraft. Oh my God, has something so happened? I, I, need, I need to speak to the captain, please. Okay. Dave. 
Come in, Dave. This is Matt. Damn it. Dave, this is Matt. Hey, Matt, it's me. I'm heading out to Bozeman. Where are you? Just to the northeast of Norris. What are you seeing? Oh, it's a single vent. Moderate size at the moment. How far from Bozeman are you? About an hour. OK, listen. Rick is on his way back from Washington. We got shaken up pretty good back at the field office. It's completely down. What can you do for us? I'll be up and running in 30 minutes. It's been estimated that within the first hour, 100 million tons of pumice, rock, and ash were ejected. Powered out by something with the explosive force of a thousand Hiroshima bombs. Then the wind carried the top of the column eastwards. Within an hour or so, pumice and ash began to fall in towns hundreds of miles away from Yellowstone. Cody, Billings, Idaho Falls, Bozeman, where Dave was. Can you give me a hand? I just got a few things in the back of the truck to unload. Thanks a lot. Rick! Rick, it's Dave! Dave, listen. Has this seismic activity, this is... Has it triggered an eruption? Yeah. Matt said it's a single vent. Okay. Dave, I need to determine the size of this vent. I need to do that as soon as possible, all right? All the equipment's down, and Matt can't get a clear view from the chopper. Just put that down anywhere. I'm booting up a link to... Please, tell me you have a high-speed data port. Oh, yeah, it's right over there. Oh, thank God. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Rick. Yeah. Um, I'll have a satellite uplink in a few minutes. Should be able to see the ash cloud, and I'll patch in the back. Okay, listen, Dave, I need you to... Talk to Michael Elbridge in Washington, okay? Get a hold of him, just, you know, and, and inform him about what's happening and tell him that we need him to declare red level three emergency, all right? You got that? Red level three. I got it. All right, and if this vent gets any bigger, anything else opens up, then I need to know about that, Dave. Will do, boss. The biggest danger from an explosive eruption is the pyroclastic surge. It happens when the, uh, when the pressure of propelling the, the eruption column up into the air fluctuates for just a second, and part of the column spills from the side of the volcano. The surges from Mount St. Helens flattened every tree within miles and killed over 50 people. Let's just say we weren't going to hang around to watch that happen at Yellowstone. Office too close. With hindsight, yes, 
But you have to be close to get accurate information. And uh, no one... Uh, no, no one could have anticipated the size of that search, its direction, or, or its speed. Pyroclastic surges can travel at up to 800 kilometers per hour, with temperatures of up to 500 degrees. They incinerate everything in their path, absolutely everything. It's a... Uh, hell coming towards you. They didn't stand a chance. All of them? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I just talked. Oh, Jesus. Uh, all right, um, where's Jock? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, I'm walking into FEMA now. Just hang on. Listen, I'm going to pass you over to Wendy. I've got Dave Price on the line. He's in a backup field office in Bozeman. Okay, let's patch him through. Everyone, this is Michael Eldridge from USGS. Dave. This is Wendy Rice at FEMA. Do you have any update on the size of the eruption? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Jock Galvin left the scene by chopper a little while back and said it was a single vent. But the GPS and SRI data show signs of swelling all over the park and increasing earthquake swarms. My guess is it's only a matter of time before we see new vents opening up. Thank you, Dave. Stay on the line and keep us up to date. Will do. Denver, bring all USAR teams to stand by. Inform Governor Marshall this could be bigger than anticipated. Are we recommending evac? It's his call, but we're advising against. It's safer inside than on the highway. Well, as I was saying, our flight plan has us about 348 nautical miles south of Yellowstone at our closest point. So if uh, ash from your volcano does head our way, the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center will divert us long before we get anywhere near it. OK. Well, how often does VAC check the satellite? About every half hour. We can put in a call now for an update if it make you feel better. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate that. But you keep me informed. Sure. Thank you. We're just getting reports, unconfirmed so far, of a major volcanic explosion in Wyoming in the United States. Well. Early reports from Wyoming say the eruption has killed literally thousands of people. Many cities near the volcano in the Midwest have been destroyed. Authorities now fear a humanitarian catastrophe on an unprecedented scale. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Boise, Idaho is reporting a citywide blackout. I'm getting reports of rolling blackouts west of Yellowstone. Ash fall on power and relay stations. Okay, tell our FEMA offices in Montana, Nebraska, Utah, and the Dakotas to shut down their power grids and switch to backup generators as of now, and make sure those generators are protected against the ash. I'd also advise them to shut down all air conditioning units. The ash will get everywhere. Okay. All federal buildings seem to seal up and start recycling their clear air. Go ahead, trigger two. I'm now monitoring the eruption column at level five zero zero. Indicates are below about two nine zero. The wind is westerly, but above that it bears around a seven or northwest. Over. Hank, Hank, you got those coordinates? Two nine zero. The wind is westerly. Oh, man. It's directly across major commercial air routes. Hank, I want all airspace across the central USA cleared and put east and west coast on standby. Michael, where is your guy? I need him here. Rick Lieberman? Yes. He's in there somewhere. He was flying back tonight. Okay. Anyone need some blanket? Uh, here you go. So? It's a single vent. Single vent. Yeah. So Mount St. Helens, then. Yeah, like you said. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Come on. That... That smell. Sulfur. 
Yeah, I got it. Does the guy have a zoom? Can you get him to zoom in? Trigger two, can you zoom in? Wait. Oh. Hey, you see that, Michael? Another one. Yeah. Yeah, that's bed number two opened up now. While it was just a single eruptive column, there was still a chance that things would be okay. But the, the second eruption... Clearly, there was so much magma and pressure in the chamber that it couldn't vent through a single column. Instead, the, the whole caldera began to unzip in a series of smaller eruptions. Once that started, we had, we had no idea how long it would go on for. Days, weeks, months. We just didn't know. Wing anti-ice. Uh, engine anti-ice. The PU. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Frank. We'll very shortly be making a precautionary landing in Cheyenne. Oh, God. If the ash cloud has blasted the cockpit window, we're landing blind. On the back of the seat in front of you, clasp your hand under your knees. Ring. 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 Worldwide, about four planes each year unexpectedly fly into ash clouds. And on that night, 35 did, and that was just over the U.S. Flying into one of these ash clouds is, is worse than getting a dump truck full of sand thrown into your engines, because volcanic ash was well, rock. The ash melts over fuel nozzles, a turbine, various engine parts. Uh, the really amazing thing is, is how often the engines survive and, and restart once you get back into, into clean air. So we were uh, among the lucky ones. We, we got down in one piece. Uh, and by the time we did get down, no one else was taking off uh, anywhere. Reports of large numbers fleeing into Canada along Interstate 15 and 29. Lincoln, Nebraska is on standby to evacuate. Stand them down. I need to clear those roads and get me a transportation update on the Coast Guard. The Air Force is evacuating its planes at a bases at Minot, Grand Forks, Ellsworth, Nellis, Kirtland, Offutt, Peterson, Edwards. Is there anywhere they're not evacuating? The East Coast, basically. <laughs> Thank you. Wyoming's declared a state of emergency. The vast for federal disaster to be called. Did you get that, Denver? Uh, guys. Hey, guys. Looks like we got another bed opened up. The event's open. Michael, how bad is this going to get?
Hello? Hey, it's me. Rick, where are you? <laughs> What's that noise? It's sirens. Listen, Yellowstone's erupted. What? I, I can't talk now. I'm with Ken, and we're making for the FEMA office in Denver. Denver? What? I, I, when I get there, I'll call you. No, wait a minute, Rick. Are you... Listen, you know, I, I feel... Hello? Rick. Are you there? Rick. Initial reports suggest that a team of scientists from the U.S. Geological Survey who are monitoring the site from a field office within the park itself have been killed. The local towns of West Yellowstone and Bozeman are being evacuated amid scenes of panic and confusion. Well, meanwhile, the growing ash cloud is spreading south and east from Yellowstone, raining down its potentially lethal contents across a vast area. The ash is bringing the roads and freeways to a total... Find military installations. What are you doing? Hang on, hang on. Okay. Okay. There is a military installation about four clicks this way. They might have a calm links to FEMA. We're not gonna walk. We can't stay here, Ken. Pop the trunk. No, Rick, Rick, for God's sake, Rick! It's volcanic ash, we can't go out, Mitt! When Vesuvius erupted, the people of Pompeii stayed in their houses. How do we know that, Ken? It was reserved in volcanic ash. Right. We, we'd already seen from previous eruptions, Mount St. Helens, Montserrat, Pinatubo. We, we'd already seen that the terrible damage that even small amounts of volcanic ash can do. If it gets in your eyes, it can blind you. When it's breathed in, it will mix with the, the moisture in your lungs to form a suffocating cement. Uh, it's also unbelievably dense. Just 20 centimetres can collapse a roof. Half that amount of the ash gets wet. Only people living within a 100 kilometre radius of Yellowstone had been evacuated. Everyone else caught under the ash cloud was in serious danger. Dave, are you getting this? Yeah, I'm seeing it. Two more vents makes five. I'd say the caldera is definitely opening up. What do you think, Michael? I concur with that. Dave, are we losing you? I believe that's here, on the roof. Hold on. Coming down hard. Dave, you gotta get out of there now. What? You go where? Well, you, you got a secret highway no one knows about? What about the people in the motel? Some are gone, but most are staying inside hoping to ride it out. Man, I'm just hoping the room service guy's still around. Mom, I'm off to the shops. So I won't be long. But it's not even 8 o'clock yet. Yeah, I want to be first in the queue. <laughs> what makes you so sure there's going to be a queue? This is London, Mum. There's news of a coming crisis. Of course there's going to be a bloody queue. Hello? No, 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 no. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Bye. That's Rick's boss. I'm still trying to locate him. Don't worry, darling. I'm sure it'll be all right. I mean, he's Mum, he's under the largest ash cloud ever witnessed. So is Ken. Do you not get it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're right. I uh, won't be long, OK? Keep an eye on Will.
She's here. Don't, don't hang out. Wendy! Wendy Rice. Let him in. Give him anything he wants. They found Rick Lee. <laughs> I'm sorry to Jeffrey Johnson. Hope you guys understand the precautions. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you for letting us in. There's water downstairs. Thank you. After you guys. <coughs> Follow me. What is this place? It's an old Cold War bunker sometimes used as a relay station for NORAD. Are you based here? No, sir. I just service the equipment. I tour all these sites, spend two, three days in each one. You've got food and water. For five days. For one, man. <sighs> Meanwhile, panic buying strips shelves across the Midwest as fear grows over the duration of the Yellowstone eruption. Financial markets have been... America, Wyoming, Yellowstone, Fritz Cohen. No se aún es la escala de la erupción. Las próximas horas serán críticas. Y Estados Unidos se prepara para soportar... This is what I call a GG. A global geophysical event. Oh. It's going to affect everyone on the planet. The government has to start planning now for how we're going to eke out the supplies we have because, well, we really are in for a hell of a time. is still the subject of conflicting and confusing reports. While officials claim it is the small to moderate event predicted, the ash cloud has spread well beyond the area that's been evacuated, prompting fears that the eruption is much bigger than anticipated. What do you make of it? Show me the satellite image. Mapping, bring up satellite. Okay, go closer. That's amazing. <coughs> okay, uh, can you give me the thermal image? Hey, Wiley, what's he doing? Gauging how big the eruption is. I'm trying to figure out how long it'll last. 
Well? Looks to me as if the uh, various vents are beginning to define the rim of the new caldera. So I, I suspect that uh, eventually they'll uh, all merge to unzip themselves into a uh, single massive vent. Rick, can you give me any idea of how long this eruption will last? Well, this looks about half as big again as the previous caldera, so I think we're, you know, you're looking at something 60 kilometers by 90 kilometers. I mean, we are, we are looking at an event on the scale of the Huckleberry Ridge eruption. The first at Yellowstone. And the biggest. <laughs> and? <laughs> and uh, if that ejected 2,500 cubic kilometers of material, then we have to make some kind of estimate for the <coughs> rate of ejection, and then you do the math, and you've got your duration. Give me a figure, Rick. Say that again? A figure. Give me a figure. What, you want me to guesstimate? Yes. I, 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 we're looking at a duration of... Between five and nine days. But it doesn't matter how long it lasts when, to make no mistake, we are looking at a VEI here. There's no question anymore. What happened? Lost the link. Let's get that signal back. VEI 8, Michael. Super eruption. Yeah, the worst case scenario. No, it isn't. I'm Jock Galvin. He was, uh, the field office when the eruption worst started. case scenario isn't a super eruption. The worst case scenario is a super eruption which goes on and on. If a volcano ejects more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of magma, it's a VEI-8. The magma chamber under Yellowstone has the capacity of 25,000 cubic kilometers. Problem is, we don't know how much of that is eruptible magma. That, that is what will dictate whether this eruption goes on for days or for weeks. By day three, the volcano showed no signs of slowing. The ash cloud had covered three quarters of the United States. Cities like Chicago, St. Louis, Detroit, Minneapolis. They were at a total standstill. Roads, railways, airports were all closed. The power supplies failed. The water was polluted. Every day it moved eastwards by another 150 kilometers. And all we could do was sit and watch. So you guys are brothers-in-law? He married my sister. I didn't approve. <laughs> she needed some sanity in her life. Oh, well, she got that, didn't she? Married to a man now who works on top of an enormous volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she now? Fiona. She's uh, in London. Well, at least she's okay. She's not okay. She's not okay. And as long as this eruption continues, there's nobody on the planet that's going to be okay. You can't afford to think like oh, that, Oh, come you? on. Toss a coin. Heads we live, tails we die. It's that random, Rick. Don't you try and be reasonable. Not now. Oh, come on. We're running out of water, we're running out of food, the air is slowly turning to poison. Do <laughs> you believe in God, sir? God? Yeah. You think, you believe that this is all God's wrath, Johnson? I believe in his mercy. Well, you can go outside and you can tell those hundreds of thousands of people who have just died in this sudden cataclysmic eruption of God's mercy. It's not helping. I'm not trying to help, Rick. 
You expect optimism at the end of the world. Well, huh? if that's what it is, then you should probably go upstairs and take a big gulp of air then. Because otherwise, what, what, what are we sitting down here for? You know, are we delaying the inevitable? Is that what we're doing? In my book, that's exactly what we're doing. Well, in my book, I'd like to think that I get to see Fiona and Will again. You know, and in Johnson's, that he gets to see his family. I think as long as we remain focused on that, we're going to be a lot better off. Yeah, well, my book's more pessimistic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, your books always are. L'edizione possa essere contenuta o se ci troviamo di fronte ad uno dei peggiori disastri. We have no clear idea of how long it might last or what devastation it might reach. Shiru akhir al-anba ila anna al-hamam wa al-sakhur allati qadafaha l-infijar al-burkani. Listen to the advice of your local emergency services. Follow it. May God be with you all. Hundreds of thousands of U.S. citizens are homeless as they've fled from the ash cloud that now covers three quarters of the country. Thousands of others have been trapped in their homes, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency admits it could be weeks before they can get aid to them. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, all. One hour ago, Air Force One took off from Andrews en route to a military bunker in Florida. That information does not leave this room. You can't run a country under several feet of volcanic ash, but some sections of the media will still say she's running away. Now, can we get to business? Wendy, how many people in the fallout zones? About 25 million. <sighs> Casualty estimates so far? In the immediate zone, 90%, excluding those that got out early. In zone two, we estimate 10% mortality. That's approximately 35,000 people. Zone three, 5% mortality. That's 122,000 people. Zone four, 3% mortality, 85,000 people. Zone five, estimate 1% mortality, 220,000 people. Total estimated deaths for the first week, 462,000. And that's assuming zone one is clear. These are all from the ash? Mainly. Either directly from ash inhalation or indirectly from roof and building collapse, uh, power failures, especially in the hospitals, um, ash-related accidents. Sir, standard advice to people was that they store enough food and water for only three days. Today is day three. Then what are we going to do? Uh, oh, excuse me? Wendy Rice. Look, even, it, yep. even when it ends, mm -hmm. we won't be able to fly for weeks with the ash still blowing around. So what are we actually talking about? You find a way. You don't just write off 25 million people. Okay. Uh, good. Put them through. We've got Rick Lieberman here. Rick, can, can you hear me? Yeah, hang on. Yeah, we got, we got you. <laughs> uh, Rick, we have four more vents open since yesterday. All right, has, has Dave been able to model these? We can't raise Dave. Yeah, was that, say that again. I'm sorry, Rick, we, we can't raise Dave. Secretary Foster here, Rick. We need to know how long this eruption is going to last so we can plan how to rescue 25 million people. With all due respect, Mr. Foster, I think you've got to change your game plan. What you have told people is to stay put and to sit this out and to wait for your help. I believe there's simply no realistic way for you to honor that, sir. And I, I, I think that if you do, people are going to die waiting for you. You need to retract your advice. You need to retract your advice. You need to tell them to come to you. Mr. Lieberman, FEMA will draw on every resource possible to rescue these people. That's our federal obligation. No, sir, this is not about protocol, Mr. Foster. This is, this is about survival and nothing more. I mean, when, when this asphalt stops, 
and 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 the and the, and the, and the, and the, the air starts to clear. The people who are trapped are gonna, like like we are, are gonna start walking. They're gonna start walking rather than stay here and wait to die. And, and they're, they're certainly not gonna make it, sir, without your help. You, you need you need to help us. You need to tell us where to walk. We need to have supplies dropped for us along the way. I mean, if we are gonna walk for life, then it's up to you guys to help us. He wants people to walk through the ash. I mean, is he crazy? The added complication was that eight out of ten FEMA centers who would normally help to coordinate the rescue were out of action because they too were under the ash cloud. It was only the very eastern and western coast with a very fine covering of ash who were still functioning. So we had to look outside for help with our allies, South America, Europe, Australia. But you see, it was about that time, three to four days in, that people outside the US started to wake up to the fact that this wasn't just our catastrophe. It was theirs too. They could see it, because that was the time it took for the sulfur aerosols from Yellowstone to go right around the globe and start a global disaster. Meanwhile, the first effects of the disaster are being felt closer to home as skies turn red over large areas of Britain due to the huge concentrations of sulfur dioxide released by the eruption. Ashfall has been reported on cars and buildings all over the country. Well, how serious these effects will become largely the right now, but if you like to at the moment. The new twist would be the onslaught of really heavy rainfall. You when you get bigger eruptions like this, tiny ash particles. act as a nuclei for water droplets, so you get torrential rain. Hundreds of thousands of US cities. <laughs> Lahars from the volcano swept 23,000 people to their Sorry, deaths. Right now, but if you'd like to... Thousands of others have been... Well, how serious... Effects will become largely dependent on how long the eruption continues. I just keep thinking, you know, could I have done something different? You know, should I have done something different? You know, just been more decisive or stronger if I could have, you know, made the call earlier. You know, maybe, maybe that would have changed things. Maybe that would have saved some lives. Uh, I guess that's up to other people to judge. Uh, and my family, it's, it's, it's them who will be left with the, uh, with the fallout of that. <coughs> no, these, <coughs> these men that I'm with, they think that if we stay, they think if we stay put that we're going to be rescued. But uh, I honest to God believe that if we, if we just, if we wait, if we just watch, wait, I honest to God think that we're as good as dead. By day five, over 2,000 cubic kilometers of ash and pumice had been dumped across the United States. Two and a half thousand times more than the fallout from Mount St. Helens. But that was only about 10% of what was in the magma chamber. How much more would come out depended on how much more eruptible magma was down there. The country was already on its knees. Thousands of people dead, millions of others homeless. If it didn't stop soon, well, Let's just say we were running out of options. We have just received reports that Mexican authorities closed the border four hours ago. According to aid workers in the area, three million people have now gathered at the Mexican border, many of them without shelter, food, or money. Maggie Chin, KCBZ News. They closed the border? To US citizens, yes.
That's totally unacceptable. They're condemning people to death. The Mexicans say they can't cope with the numbers. Well, we're gonna have to kick some ass. Well, I think the president might feel that right now is a bad time to invade Mexico, Bob. Can we move on? Yes, sir. All right, our best case scenario is if the eruption stops in two days. If that's the case, access to zones one and two won't be possible until at least three to four weeks after that. So it's unlikely we'll find any survivors. We can start supply drops into zones three through five about two weeks after the eruption ends if the weather is with us, but it's gonna to have to be piecemeal, depending on whether the satellite can find clean skies for the aircraft. That's too long. What about Rick's walk to life? We can't advise people to walk through the ash. It's just too dangerous. So we're asking people just to sit there and starve to death? There are hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people stumbling around out there looking for help. All right, we'll go with walk to life. I need to hear a plan out of this room as to how to do that fast. <coughs> well, it's still ready. Ash? <coughs> Save the battery, we're gonna need it outside. leave them behind it. I guess. I should have joined the Rangers. Cheyenne's our best bet. <coughs> we should head there. <coughs> FEMA. <coughs> FEMA knows we're here. They'll send somebody. Kenny, FEMA's got 25 million people to save. By the time they find us, we'll have starved to death. Not if we hate Johnson. <laughs> Try it, man. <laughs> Definitely a book in this when we get out. <laughs> oh, I don't know. One doesn't like to say I told you so. We assumed that when all the vents merged together to form a new caldera, then the pressure would drop and the eruption would stop. That was our thinking. Then, on day seven, our seismographs began to pick up massive quakes, and we realized that the ground within the new caldera rim was beginning to collapse, collapse into the empty space left by the ejected magma. That's all the major drop points. The Pentagon has 45,000 pallets, 800 planes, and 560 choppers ready to go as soon as it's safe to fly. Information leaflets? With the ash jumpers and all the pallets. You need to see this. Does this mean? This means that the pressure holding the eruption column in the air is beginning to drop. It, it... <laughs> it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And now to the news that America has been waiting for, the end of the super volcanic eruption at Yellowstone National Park. At 9.17 a.m. local time, 
the eruption column began to collapse. Ocurrida en el Parque Nacional de Yellowstone, Wyoming, Estados Unidos, parece haber llegado a su fin. Huge pyroclastic surges, which radiated out over 100 miles from the base of the column, overwhelming the U.S. Air Force drone that's been monitoring the eruption. Across America, the overwhelming task of trying to bring aid to the estimated 29 million people trapped by the ash fall begins. Authorities now admit it'll take weeks, if not months, to reach those trapped closest to the volcano. <coughs> We're going to head back toward the interstate and then turn north. Any abandoned vehicles we come across along the way, I think we should stop and check them for water in the washer bottle, <coughs> food, anything we can use. Okay. Okay. How far? Uh, outskirts of Cheyenne are approximately 25 kilometers. You know, I've got to say, Richard, this has been a crappy book to us so far. <coughs> Flashlight. <coughs> Ready? Okay. Come on. Come on. to be B.C. and A.D. before and after Christ. Well, now it's B.Y. and A.Y. before and after Yellowstone. Before and after the world changed out of all recognition. Suddenly, utterly, irrevocably. The global effects were not fully felt until a month or so after the eruption had stopped. Billions of tons of sulfur dioxide ejected by the volcano wrapped their way around the northern hemisphere, cutting down the sunlight. Within weeks, temperatures started to plummet, as much as 20 degrees in some places. Then the aerosols jumped to the equator and started to cool the southern hemisphere. The monsoon failed, adding drought to the bitter cold. Climatologists say it will start getting better in a few years. But let's just say, I don't think I'll live to see another time. clear up the scale of what we still have to do all this time on. 80% of the USA covered by ash. 20% rendered unusable or uninhabitable. Cities and towns permanently abandoned. Billings, Cheyenne, Denver, Salt Lake City. I don't know how we've kept going, to be honest. I mean, just the animals. The livestock, millions dead, rotted where they fell. And the people. If it hadn't been for Walk to Life, 7.3 million lives saved. 
that was an achievement. And it was Rick's achievement. Not knowing was the hardest part. He called from Cheyenne from the airport with Ken. And, and then I didn't hear anything until Michael Eldridge called from FEMA to say they were in this, this bunker place. But safe. But then, when there was no news, I gave up all hope of ever seeing them again. Why did I choose to come back? It's hard to say, really. To face the reality of what nearly happened, I suppose. How close we actually came to never leaving this place at all. We were picked up in Cheyenne. And when the ash finally stopped falling, we were transported to Denver. where we waited with thousands of others for our turn to be rescued. It would be three months until the transatlantic routes opened up again and I made it back to my family in England. But I soon realized I couldn't stay there. Not until I'd seen for myself what had happened to Yellowstone. The place I'd spent my whole life trying to understand. Things will get better. They will, eventually. Nature will recover. The world will recover. This, after all, is not only how life ends, it's also how life begins. And one day, someday, Yellowstone will erupt again. But not on my watch. <laughs> 